But before we start, quickly, what is proportion? What are we talking about? Proportion is the relative size of an element of something to its whole. And when we're drawing and thinking about proportion, we're particularly thinking of the relative size of one part of our drawing to another. So in this shape, in this rectangle, the proportion of the overall shape is created by the fact that this side is approximately half of this side. And that creates the proportions of a long rectangle. Now I can draw it larger or smaller, but if this side is always approximately half this size, proportionally, it's the same. But if I were to change the proportions, change the relative size of this to this, if I make this side, say, a quarter, then the proportions of my overall shape are very different. If we look at this shape here, we have a square. The proportion of one side to the other is that they're equal. When I draw this door though, I also want this door proportionally to be the same. And to do that, this door from white to white is approximately the middle third. So I want to create three equal spaces if I want to keep the proportions of this doorway correct. And it goes up a bit, a bit more than two thirds. And this doorway looks just a little bit too wide for the proportions of this doorway. So when I do my drawing in a moment, that's the sort of thing we're looking at. It's not just the proportions of one side of a shape to another, but it's the proportions of all the components together. If my reference spire looks like this, and I don't get the proportions correct of the height to the width, I can end up with a spire that looks perhaps fatter than my reference. And of course, when we change the overall proportions of different parts of our subject, it starts to look significantly less like the original. Let me draw this now and give you my tips and show my process of how I observe and I think when I draw to as best as possible keep things in proportion. I always choose a shape that's relatively easy to draw in the right proportion because it's going to be my starting reference point for pretty much everything else I draw. In this case, it's a fairly easy to find square that we have here. And sometimes if we're not sure if something actually is a square, it's worth it just checking to be sure. This is the way we actually hone our senses to, to really see whether something is a square or if it's a rectangle in some form. I'm going to start with a square that's going to be about the same size. I'm going to put this band in right now because although it's not part of the shape, visually it creates quite a bit of, not optical illusion, but optical distraction, which can make it harder to actually judge the proportions. And I can see that this doorway is approximately a third, the center third. By using dots as my marks, before I commit to a line with my pen, it can help me position and just confirm in my mind, this is where I want them to be. And I think that looks okay. Now I'm going to, keeping the proportions the same, seek to put this shallow dome on top. But first we have this overhanging cornice. Always important to notice that cornices hang past the edge most of the time. Now, because of the angle, this can be a bit tricky. We need to center what we're doing. We need to notice that this lines up with this and this corner lines up pretty much with that one. That this actually lines up about there and here we have it on the other side. So these are the sorts of observations I try and make to help me position things more accurately. And I'm using a 0.2 millimeter Copic multi-liner throughout this drawing. 
Again, we want to make sure we position this dome correctly, not to mistakenly position it centrally here, but to see that because of the angle, it's off center. This whole drawing took me probably 20, 25 minutes to do if I just take off a few minutes to allow for all the stopping to talk in real time. Hopefully it won't look quite so strange when we get the rest of the wall in place. So now I'm looking at this distance, not this one. Goes straight across. And this is just gonna be a bit below there. While I'm not adding much detail just yet, towards the end, I do quite a lot of adding detail. And I just talk a bit about my technique of creating the effective detail rather than having to draw all the detail. So if you haven't heard that, it's well worth catching that as well. Eight minutes real time. So at this stage, we stop and we think, do the proportions look correct? And I'm happy with it. Now, the way I draw, I would probably normally have been putting perhaps some of the detail onto this half of the gatehouse. But we'll keep our focus for now on proportion and move to the church behind. The first thing we have to work out is how far along to draw this. And this is what I'm looking at. This is the end of the church. Now, if I, if I were to draw an imaginary line down here and I then look at this as a shape, as a box, then that tells me if I create this shape, this proportion of shapes here, a rectangle of this proportion, then the edge of the rectangle will give me the edge of the church. So let's see how that goes. Now, unfortunately, I didn't quite do this line accurately enough, so it's a bit distracting. And probably visually, it's easier to actually make this our box, use this down pipe. Now, is that proportion the same? I think it's a little, it's a little boxy. It needs, to, it does need to be slightly further along. And the other corner is hidden behind, but we can work out where it would be. And it's going to be approximately on this corner here. And if we look at where the apex of the pediment is, by chance, it actually happens to be almost halfway in this line. So I'm happy to use that for now. From there to there, I would say that this is halfway. So there's perhaps a little more than halfway in one direction. And I'm going to check my angle this way. Now, one side of the tower is just to the right of our apex. How high is it? And sort of try to see a shape a bit like this in relation to this. So the tower is about square, but it, uh, the wall, the wall comes down about there. So that's, I think, the base of this window is quite low down. I'm looking at this line here. You might just add this section in here. Now we have the tower, bit of a challenge here. I'm, I'm going to see this, and I'm, I'm looking at this distance, in real, it's more than that distance. And it's really quite narrow, it's, it's close to the window width. And look at pretty, it almost certainly is 
centered on the window, just slightly off. But if the top of my tower is there, that looks quite well centered. But when I look at this distance here, then it's well past the distance past the top of the wall as the halfway point. So I'm going to work from here to here, and I'm gonna pay attention to where I want my pen to end up, not where it actually is. And I'm gonna do a dress rehearsal line to get a bit of muscle memory. And now I'll do the other one. Now we do the rest. Now this one joins here, but this one joins a bit further up. Whoops. Now, I actually thought I was going to be in trouble because I could tell my arm was cramped and I couldn't be bothered to move my chair. So we'll just try that again. It's not much better, but it's better than what we've just left there. I'm just going to lift the top a little bit so I can make it a bit thinner. Put the ball there and then put the cross on top. First thing I'm going to do, because this is annoying me, is I'm going to put some hatch in so that I can hide this. And we do have some decorative elements to add as well. We have in place all the major elements of our scene. Now let's just check how our proportions are going. Now I know I pushed this tower up just a little bit more, but from the top of the tower to the base of the wall is that. So yeah, I've drawn a little bit larger, but I guess I deliberately put it about that much higher. And if I look at say the distance from here to here, how does that compare from over here? It, it actually is almost a square. So let's check that. From here to here, from there to there. So again, mine is just a little bit, a little bit larger. So I've slightly enlarged this. I think it's close enough to be in the same size. So my technique for capturing the proportions, I think has worked quite well. I'll add a few details to make the scene look, I think, a little more interesting. This is a little bit of hatching just to indicate that the lead is a different colour. When we think of proportion and scale, it's important to still apply them to even things such as individual bricks. If I make these bricks in my drawing proportionally larger than in the reference, I'm going to, in effect, make the building look smaller because we have a sense of how large bricks are. Again, some hatching to indicate the colour of the door, the, the value of the colour that we have. And now I have the stonework, which creates a different effect to the bricks. Again, I want the scale of the rows of stonework, though, to be in proportion. I don't want them to be too large. This is where patience is often needed for the artist. If you're interested in my way of drawing this sort of detail, I do have a playlist on techniques for drawing the effective detail rather than having to draw all of the detail. 
in a range of different subjects, including bricks and stonework. But in essence, I want to suggest it in part, but not have to draw it all. And exactly what marks I use depends on what effect it creates. And often this is to do with the scale, with the distance, how far away this is, how large or small these objects are in relation to the overall object, and so forth. So there's no hard and fast way of doing it. We have to be thoughtful and creative with every subject and to choose the marks that, as I said, create the effect of what we see. And that's often by utilizing shadow or particular objects that draw the eye more or were of darker value and so forth. Negative space is also often very important in doing this. And to create a little interest and for framing, I think we'll just add a hint of these trees that we have. And trees are actually a great example of the principle of creating the effect of the detail, not drawing all the detail. Because how can we draw all the leaves? We know the detail in our mind, which is troubling. We can often see it in the photo, which is even more troubling and yet we can't possibly draw it. So we need to see the whole form as a whole and create marks that capture that effect. And again, the shadows, particularly in foliage, is often more important than anything else to capture the effect of. And I have playlists on drawing trees using this method as well. All varieties and types and sizes and scales of trees and different marks to create different effects with different types of foliage. So if trees are a trouble for you, you really shouldn't miss this playlist. Why not check it out? Notice how not rushing to do hard straight lines prematurely gives us an option to create a softer effect, which is often more in keeping with what we actually have in our reference. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I know from comments that drawing things in proportion is an ongoing issue, and it's always a challenge. I think, quite frankly, the biggest problem we have, in essence, is that we start to draw, we put the ink on the paper, before we've seen enough information in our observation to actually understand what we're drawing and then finding where that will be on our paper. And as you notice, I love to do positioning marks on my paper, just little dots and so forth, to help me see, is that right? Help me visualize the shape, the forms that I'm wanting to create on the paper and to check the proportions and is the whole thing looking the way it should. And of course, I'll post this photo on my channel community page. So if you want to have a go drawing it yourself, you absolutely can. But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, whatever the proportions look like afterwards, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.